And uh, this time of year, middle of November, ready or not, we start thinking about holidays and things of that nature. As well, we start thinking about how we can help others. That's part of the uh, holiday spirit, right? And we're going to uh, help get us in that mode today a little bit with the folks from the Haven of Rest and in as much house. Elaine Hunsicker is here, Executive Director. Good morning. And uh, Daniel Jones as well. Good morning to the both of you. Morning, Richard. Thanks very much for the time today. So here we are in the middle of November. What happens at the Haven at this time of year? It seems like it's a lot on top of what you're all already doing. You know, we come into this time of the year, and uh, you know, here we are looking at the holidays that we, uh, as, a, as a culture, we celebrate Thanksgiving for everything that we have, mm -hmm. and we have so much. We are blessed with so much um, food, you know, clothing, all these wonderful things, heat in our houses, right. houses that we actually have to heat. Right. Uh, we're blessed with so many things, and at the Haven of Rest, uh, we just minister to the people that have not. You know, there are... It was a beautiful sermon yesterday at my church. It was about uh, this time of year and, mm -hmm. and giving and, and the people who have not. And it was a beautiful part of the sermon was talking about that verse from Matthew. You know, what you've done for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you've done for me. That's a direct quote from Jesus. You know, those those are the kinds of things we're talking about here at the Haven at this time of the year. We are doing for others down there. Mm hmm. So uh, with that in mind, there's a push in a number of ways that you're trying to meet those needs at this time of year, right, Elaine? Yes, there is. Um, this time of the year, it's starting to get cold outside. Our numbers go up. People who were living in their cars or on somebody's porch or in the garage are coming in now because they can no longer make do out there. Mm-hmm. So you see this happen. Let's just be clear about this. Mm -hmm. you, you, when it's cold, uh, you see more people. Makes sense. And when the springtime comes and things warm up, uh, the numbers drop off a little because they can find uh, different means of shelter. Like yes, you no, described. Little, uh, there's some seasonality to it for yep. sure. When mm -hmm. it gets cold outside, our numbers go up. That's uh, without a question. Uh, when it gets brutally cold outside, when it's 14 below zero, mm. yeah, we get more people than <laughs> a box of toothpicks. It's <laughs> right, right. It's very crowded down there. So um, this time of the year, yeah, we see an uptick in our numbers, absolutely. And it's interesting because of the way you described that, Elaine, because, um, you know, maybe you see fewer people, but uh, it doesn't mean the problem's solved. That's true. And there's a lot of people that are staying with family members. When the weather's warm, you're outside more. It's not so congested. But you get a small apartment or a small house and two or three families living there. And once the weather gets cold and you're more in each other's face, you know, <laughs> and in, in each other's place, yeah. people's tempers flare and they end up arguing and mm -hmm. losing their homes. Or the landlord finally catches on that there's extra people living there. And well, if they're not on your lease, you're out of luck. Because right. then you've got two families in danger of being evicted. And when it's warmer, if you are trying to stay out of each other's space and you are outside more, mm -hmm. something like that might be recognized easier, That more than just the uh, people on the lease living there. Right. Yeah. On any given day, Richard, down there, we have close to 150 people. And that's through the different shelters we have for families with children or in the men's shelter or even in our life recovery programs. You know, there's there's 11 ministries now. We, mm. We're up from 10 from last year. We added a child care ministry this mm. year. And so in any given day, 150 people. And you can just imagine what it takes to run a household with 150 people in it. Right, that's right. And we're going to talk about how we can help do that when we come back in just a minute on WBCK 840. 16 WBCK, we're talking with Daniel and Elaine from the Haven of Rest this half hour. So you have a number of things going on. One of them is called WOW, <laughs> but it stands for something, doesn't it? It does. The Words of Warmth program. I see you've got the flyer I over do. there. It's a, it's a pretty cool little program that started by Adriana and Noah Ramos. They're young kids. They're on our billboards, which are mm -hmm. up around town right now. Those are the faces of the Haven, I guess. Wow. And, and they have been for a couple of years. They, they, super cute kids, and 
they are uh, professional models, and they come out and, and do these billboards for us and tell people about the Haven. They started a little program called Words of Warmth, or WOW, which is a donation drive to generate the things that we give to our residents at this time of year as Christmas mm -hmm. presents. There's sweaters, there's you know underwear, there's socks, there's just wonderful things like that. And these kids' idea is to put a little card with it, with some words on it that says, hey, you're special, you're remembered, you, don't, you are somebody, and you count, and you matter. And that's a message that these wow. kids want to give to the homeless of Battle Creek. Boy, uh, in the years that you've done this, I imagine that that's one thing that uh, doesn't get said enough, probably, and that uh, someone struggling uh, might feel as though they're marginalized or not uh, thought of. That's very true, and it becomes such a natural state of affairs sometimes over time when you keep trying and keep trying and keep failing, and you begin to think, well, it's... I'm just not ever going to accomplish anything. I'm ju I just can't do it. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we do at the Haven is we really want to encourage people. We really try to plant the seeds of, yes, you can do it. We'll help you do it. Mm -hmm. We will teach you how to do it. And that really makes a tremendous difference. And to know that the community is not judging them but is behind them makes a huge difference. The old, uh, what is that old saying? Teach them to fish instead of giving them a fish or something like that. Yeah. Well, teach a man to fish and you fed him for a lifetime. That's it. Absolutely. That's the one, right. So do we need, um, I mean, if, folks I think probably uh, on a, a wide scale have these kinds of uh, giving um, goals on their to-do list at this time of year, but programs like this help remind us too, don't they? Absolutely. And if you want to look at who makes an impact in this town, you know who really makes a difference in this town, I have, after six years of being at the Haven of Rest, I can truly say the Haven of Rest makes the biggest impact on the most vulnerable population in our city. Mm -hmm. The homeless and the very low income that come to us are the most vulnerable, and their children. And the Haven of Rest steps right into that gap and fills it. We are there where the rubber meets the road. So you want to make an impact? Support the Haven of Rest. Heck yeah. So in that regard, you, you look back when you get to November, too, and you look back at the year and say, how well did we do? Uh, what is the extent of, of uh, the problems with which the folks we help are uh, dealing? Mm -hmm. Have we made any headway this year, do you think? Oh, yeah. We keep, we keep a lot of data because we really need to know that. We need to be responsible for the sacrifices that people make to support us. And if they say, well, what difference is this making, we need to be able to tell them that. And so we track that data. We look at our programs. We don't want to pat ourselves on the back for doing marginal work. <laughs> you know, we want to be able to say with confidence, I've done my best. Mm -hmm. yeah, with, uh, with the money that we are blessed with and the, the programs that we support, I have literally driven program managers to tears asking them, so what? Tell me what makes your program effective. Tell me what difference you made. And we do keep that kind of data. We have to measure it. We have to, to tell the story out there that this is the change we are creating. Right. And we do create some amazing change in lives. And I imagine folks in, in your lines of work uh, become, uh, like we all do, in a routine. But when you start examining what you're doing... That's when the tears start falling, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. Realize what you've done. Yeah, it's something different every day. Every single day we're intervening in people's lives or supporting them or helping them create change in their own lives. So it never gets dull. You know, there's, yeah. there's, There may be a routine that you show up at 8.15 in the morning, but uh, there's no routine as, as far as people's lives are concerned. Hmm. Something different every day. The Haven has a wish list. For Christmas, we'll talk about that, among other things, coming up in just a minute on WBCK. This portion. 23 WBCK, we're talking with Daniel and Elaine from the Haven of Rest. And in as much house, you know, uh, there was an envelope that you might have seen the, in uh, yesterday's paper, right? Yeah, and in the shopper last week. Yeah, and uh, there's just a couple of stats on here. I'll read them to you. 50%, 50%. Of those homeless in Michigan are adults and children in families. Mm -hmm. About 25% of the homeless are substance abusers. So now we have an addiction component yep. that's uh, interlaced there. Uh, One-fourth of the homeless are war veterans. 
and 21% of homeless children repeat a grade in school. And certainly in my career doing this, Mm -hmm. I've heard this a lot, distractions to learning. When you're worried about what you're going to eat next or where you're going to sleep tonight, you're not focused on 2 plus 2. No, and the kids do quite often fall through the cracks, so we developed our gain access program. Mm -hmm. We call it GAP. It's an after-school tutoring program. We have tutoring, uh, recreational activities, field trips to museums and places like the Barn Theater, um, behind-the-scenes activity that they do, just different things that really help them um, bridge that gap. And Last year, not one of our kids was held back a grade. Oh, good. That's or good. had to go to summer school. Wow. And, of and the that, kids that participated in our GAP program. Mm-hmm. That is a population of over 300 kids that we see in a year. Oh, wow. That's something. You know, let's talk about that a second. The family component of this whole thing. I think there might be a perception, of course, that uh, a homeless person is alone or or, or maybe is uh, not connected with their family, when uh, a good amount, obviously, uh, whom you see are families. The unit is still together, and, in fact, that's part of your goal, to keep them together. Right. So in Kalamazoo County, it was interesting. The voters just passed a, uh, a, a tax, essentially, that skims some money, ends up being over $800,000 a year, mm-hmm into an interim program to help folks who are in between, they're, they're displaced, they're in between their own uh, living arrangements uh, to help them maintain a roof over their heads. I'm curious to, to, think, to hear what you think about those things. You know, I think I, there's a couple thoughts that come to my mind when you yeah. talk, start talking about taxes, and they it was a property tax, so mm-hmm. all the homeowners were paying this tax. Right. Um, it's almost like forced giving. You know, it is. Congratulations, you get the opportunity to give to a charity that you didn't choose. Uh, this opportunity with the envelope that was in the paper and in the shopper, you've got the opportunity to choose. Mm-hmm. And I hope you choose the Haven of Rest You know, this holiday season to support. The other thought on that is this $800,000 a year now being administered by the government. You know, we've... We've, we've been very, very challenged to see a government program that really is efficient. And, you know, I'm not going to slam anybody around here. I think that in six years when that tax is supposed to sunset, right. of course it won't. It'll be renewed. Probably won't. <laughs> That's right. And in that interim, $800,000 then becomes distributed at who's bequest at whose authority you know mm-hmm. the, there's going to be some infighting over who gets to put their finger in that cookie jar and get that pot of money um, it's a lot easier when people make the choices themselves and say i want to support this charity or this program because it's effective and and we're ready to tell that story at the haven of rest we are effective we we really make a difference in people's lives so if you'd like to help uh, the haven of rest certainly will accept your donation there's a reason why uh, your list was printed on an envelope. Heck yeah, <laughs> pre-addressed. It makes it easy. Yeah. You don't have to look up the address. Yep, you just put your check in there and send it along. You also will accept uh, donations of items. In fact, you have a wish list uh, that's uh, circulating now at yeah. this time of year. Yeah. Give Please. us some examples of what's on there. Well, um, f- uh, fleece wear, hoodies, mm-hmm. sweats, um, underwear, especially men's underwear, long underwear, socks. Things like uh, foot powder, really warm gloves, warm hats, scarves, those kinds of things. The same things that I put on before I go out the door in the morning. Right. And um, the um, with children, of course, you know, they have their own specific needs as well. Mm-hmm. So we have families uh, that you can adopt from In As Much House oh. or the WIN wow. program, which is a transitional housing program that we administer for families. Um, and those families, you get to um, um, pick out toys and, you know, whatever you might, whatever's fun for you, you know, those kids love getting it. That's a terrific idea, too, yeah. that if someone wants to make a connection that they can really see when you become involved with a family by adopting them, as you mm-hmm. say, boy, that serves that purpose, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or take them a food basket. Yeah. It doesn't have to be toys and clothes. It can be food. So if somebody wants to do that, they want to bring some things or they want to adopt a family, how do they do it? You know, our donations are accepted down at the Haven, which is right downtown by the county courthouse. 
um, we're there uh, probably 16, 18 hours a day. There are volunteers available to take a donation. So come during business hours, drop in and see us, say hello. We'll get you a receipt in the mail for the value of your donation. Mm -hmm. And you know, to the extent your CPA says it's tax deductible, it'll be <laughs> tax deductible. Um, and again, that, that program, the Words of Warmth, you know, yep. if you want to do something like that through your church or service club, uh, just give us a call. We'll get you connected on that as well. And, and the Haven's phone number downtown uh, is listed on all of our brochures that go out there. Okay. And uh, easy to find, too, if you just put it in Google. Uh, oh, absolutely. Haven of Rest. Also, uh, quickly, want to just mention you have uh, an event called the Lady in Red 2015. It's coming up on December 5th. What's that about? The Lady in Red is kind of the idea of Chris Edwards' salon, which uh -huh. is out on 6th Avenue near the airport. Um, really beautiful salon, neat salon. That's where I get my hair cut. So. Mm -hmm. Um, they came up with an event to support our Women's Life Recovery Program. Nice. And over the course of four hours on Saturday, December 5th, from 4 to 8, they'll have a salon, um, people that take care of the, the salon and give the services there. For $20 to get into, that's the cost of a ticket, for $20 you get a couple of services that you can pick from a menu. Nice. Hand massage, eyebrow waxing, those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. You might need your eyebrows waxed, Richard. I might. Thank you for pointing that out. And uh, <laughs> you know, come on out. It's December 5th, Saturday. You can buy a ticket at Chris Edwards Salon. I've got some tickets as well. Um, it's mostly for the ladies. Wear red. It's a fun event. There's prizes. I think the first 50 ladies through the door are given a gift bag of salon goodies. It's probably close to worth $75 or more. Wow. Very nice. So, yeah, there's some swag there. I thought about going and getting that bag because Christmas is coming up, right? That's and there's some right. people on my list that might like that. <laughs> That's true. You're going to have your eyebrows done or <laughs> no, a pedicure? I'm going to not answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Haven of Rest, easy enough to find. Thank you both for the update. Thank, Thank you, you, Richard. All right. Talk to you soon. 830.